Yo, what's going on everyone? It's the Flying Pig here on Flying Pig United with another cheeky little video for you. Uh, latest Man United news video and rundown of the latest days goings on. And uh, also some sort of breaking news for you and a really strange news story to talk about in regards to Paul Pogba and Erling Haaland's agent, Mina Riola, which we're going to get into shortly. Uh, but do us a favour at the start of this stream, smash that thumbs up button on the video, give it a cheeky little share around on social media, that helps us get a few more viewers. Um, and give us a cheeky little algorithm boost. Also, if you're new, uh, do hit that subscribe button, get yourself involved for these streams. We cover all the latest uh, United-related news on this channel, so uh, get yourself involved as well throughout the show. We've got Ten Hag's Reds in here, Robin, Stephen Carr, Berber, Asha Katana, Magnus, Johnny M, Marky Harris, Naz786, uh, all you legends, thank you very much for getting in there. Sorry, my headphones just dropped on the floor. Thanks very much for getting in here, you bunch of legends. Yeah, do like, like the video and get yourself involved throughout. We want to hear your thoughts and opinions, of course. Um, but let's just get into the sort of breaking news then, guys. A uh, bit of a strange one today because it came out, it was reported a couple of hours ago, pretty much everywhere. I saw lots of reports on many respected news outlets, such as, you know, uh, well, 90 Min, uh, Talk Sport. When I say respected, I'm using the word loosely. But you know what I'm saying? Like actual outlets reporting that Mino Riola has passed away. Uh, Real Madrid, the football club, tweeted out there from their official page and said it, it's, it's, they're sad to hear the news that Mino Riola has passed away, etc., which they have since deleted. Um, so, you know, just to let you guys know what's going on, uh, he's not dead. And everybody, everybody is was reporting a couple of hours ago that he had died. Uh, this is the latest that we've got on it. So uh, um, he's actually reacted to his own death as well, which is actually quite interesting, guys. Uh, let's have a look at this. So he did tweet out a little while ago and said that his current health status for the ones wondering, pissed off. Second time in four months, they kill me. Seem also able to resuscitate. So, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very strange bit of news, this one, guys, because so many outlets reporting that this guy's died. And then just shortly afterwards, he's tweeting himself saying that he's not died and that he's, uh, he's, he's actually alive and that the press or the media is just trying to kill him off here, it seems. So a very, very strange turn of events today, guys. It's very, very odd. Um, yeah, oh, I know he's still alive, Stephen Carr. That's literally what this video is about, about the fake reports that the Mina Riola has died. He's obviously the agent to Paul Pogba and Erling Haaland. He's still alive uh, at this moment in time. So this is the latest updates we've got on him. He's, he's understood to be not very well. So we have an update here. Just received a call from a prominent British agent and close friend of Mina Riola to say that the Italian Dutch agent has not died, but is very, very ill says so reports of his friend death are inaccurate. So that was one of the first things we saw come out at 125 to say that this was incorrect. Um, and then obviously he's tweeted himself a bit later on and said that he's uh, not dead. Um, we also have an update from Fabrizio Romano that says that Dr. Alberto Zangrio from San Rafael Hospital in Milano tells Anta on Mino Riola's conditions. I'm outraged by the phone calls from the pseudo journalist speculating on the life of a man who is fighting to survive. So... Clearly, this is just fake news, guys. <laughs> Clearly, this is some fake news which has been put out there um, and it's just been ran with. A lot of different outlets have, have reported on it. Big mistake to report on that sort of stuff so quickly without having the true basis of the facts, if you ask me. Absolute shit show from a lot of these uh, re reports. Um, but that is the case, guys. So uh, also, you know, an upgrade from Tank Grady Pal Mary that says that Mino Rio's doctor says that Mino Rio is, extre is, is extremely critical conditions, but he is fighting. So, uh, you know, it's a bizarre set of events, this one, guys. It's a bizarre set of events. I don't really know what to make of it. A lot of people were reporting this, and it's just incorrect. He has tweeted out since and said that he's alive and kicking. So very, very strange, guys. I know Jonathan says shame on the journalists with their lies. There you go. Well, it's not. I wouldn't necessarily say it's lies, but what they've all had to do is backtrack very quickly. It's just piss poor. They've jumped the gun. For something as serious as somebody passing away or dying, you don't just get on there and just run with a story when there's rumours about somebody passing away. You have to have strong bases for for this, i.e., you know, it's actually been confirmed by the family or etc. Something like that. It's just all the all the all you know authorities. It's absolute nonsense to to actually run with this story. So a lot of the outlets that have done it, shame on them. Let's get a shame bell in the live chat. Shame, shame. Let's get a fucking hashtag shame on them in <laughs> the live chat for, for for reporting that somebody has died. When they've actually not died. So it's pretty shocking stuff. Yeah, t Mills is embarrassing. Um, he should have been the Bond villain in no time to die, says Robin. Oh my goodness me. Okay, so several Italian media reports that Mirona died at the age of 54. His death is denied on his Twitter account. 
He said, the status of my health at the moment, I am angry because I was pronounced dead uh, for the second time in four months. Um, he also, by the way, he represents a lot, a lot of different football players. This would have had serious implications, and it may well, you know, obviously still have serious implications to a lot of the players that we're about to mention. So Erling Haaland, he's, of course, the representative of him. Paul Pogba, Mr. Paul Pogba, Manchester United's Paul Pogba. He represents him. Uh, Romelu Lukaku, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, Matthias De Ligt, Ryan Gravenberg, Stefan De Vries, Daniel Malen, Denzel Dumfries. A whole bunch of players is in his uh, stable, so to speak. So he doesn't definitely has a big influence on quite a lot of um, well-known, big-profile players. Uh, also, Arne Vermeulen over uh, in the Netherlands reporting that just got a message from the right source that Mino Riola has not died. There are concerns about his health, but the announcement in various media uh, that he has died is incorrect. Um, so uh, pretty outrageous, and his doctor is outraged by the uh, by the different reports that are coming out guys so it's very very strange this one um pretty strange and he also uh yeah it, it's 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 very odd guys look we're not going to get on to i know a lot of people don't like him i personally don't like him either i don't wish death upon him though you know what i mean i don't wish anybody to die um and at the end of the day you know unless something comes out that he's a fucking uh, you know, like a murderer or something, then, you know, it's like, okay, he has made a lot of money. He has taken a lot of money out of the game of football. And he is obviously a bit of a pie-fingering scummer in that sense. But at the same time, you know, it's like, I don't I wouldn't wish death on anybody. I saw a lot of people on, on social media, like, almost celebrating the fact that he's died. Or like, saying, like, they don't give a shit and he's a scumbag and all this sort of stuff. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, fair enough. You know, let's not pretend like we like somebody. But at the same time, Let's show a little bit of fucking decorum, guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? If somebody had actually died, which in this case they hadn't, and they're not a murderer or a child killer or a fucking whatever, then I would say that they've got, they've got you know, families, they've got people around them, etc. And everyone should just try and be as respectful as possible. That hasn't happened. That hasn't happened, um, uh, though. Um, so it's not the case. He hasn't died. But I have seen a lot of people saying a lot of nasty things on social media. And listen, I said he's a pie finger in scummer who takes a lot of money out of the game. I stand by that. But he hasn't fingered his last pie just yet, it seems, guys. In terms of like having his fingers in loads of different pies all over Europe in football teams and agents and players all over the land. This is what he's done. But that doesn't make him a, you know, a criminal or a, or, a, or a sicko or anything, really. Let's just be honest. There's worse things to be than a grubby football agent. So uh, let's just get a bit of perspective. Matty Braga says, is he really dead? No, he's not dead. He's not dead, mate. The, the reports are fake, mate. All of these outlets that have run with this story are incorrect at this moment in time, unless somebody's hacked his Twitter account and somebody's fucking pretending to be his doctor and uh, somebody's pretending to be Fabrizio Romano and all the rest of it. Unless that's true, then, you know, he's not dead. He is understood to be very unwell. He's not, he's not, he's supposed to be not exactly in great condition. He is in intensive care. And he's fighting for his health at this moment in time. So that's what we understand about him. Um, but he is not dead. And he's even himself tweeted about it a little while ago. So very, very strange stuff, guys, for this to happen. Do us a favor, everyone, if you're just getting in the stream, though. Smash that like button. Let's see if we can get 100 likes on the stream. Uh, get yourself subscribed so you can chat. You only need to be subscribed for one minute as well um, to get yourself involved. And give it a share around on social media if you're that way inclined. Just want to say a big shout out to everybody that's in the stream right now. Gung Shi, a legend. How's you today, mate? Nathan McKenna, Flabby G, the Cake Cadet, Berber, Johnny Gallagher, Luke Mora, Philip Mullins, Mark O, Asha Katana, Dirty Sanchez, Victor Camarasa, T Mill, Mark O, Amy Evans, Matty Braga, Berber, Lee Everett, Aaron, Scott Corden, Shargav, Mark O, Jimmy Jones, everyone else. You're a bunch of legends for getting in here. Thanks for joining and getting your thoughts and opinions into the live chat. So, uh, yeah, very odd, guys. I'm just going to dip into the live chat, see what you guys are saying about this whole situation. It is quite bizarre. I can't really remember. Well, there is often fake reports on like things like Facebook and stuff where a random page has just made like a report about somebody dying. You see things like that. But it's very rare that you see proper news outlets. When I say proper news outlets, I don't really mean proper news outlets. Um, but reporting these actually died. It's pretty strange. Pretty strange. Okay, so let's see what you guys are saying. Thank you, Ms. 528, for smashing the like. You legend. I appreciate that. Uh, Sean Easton says, how is he not dead, nearly dead, or slightly ill? I think he's more than slightly ill, but he's not dead right now. I think in terms of his, his condition and where he's at, from what we understand from his doctor, I mean, just to get a quote from his doctor up here. Um, so uh, Fabi Romano said that Dr. Alberto Zangrio, let me just move that other one out of the way, um, said that uh, 
He's outraged by the phone calls from a pseudo journalist speculating on the life of a man who's fighting to survive. So he's fighting to survive. And we also had a, a report from this chap. Um, hold on a second, which says that just as received a call from prominent British agent, close friend of Minarello, to say that the Italian is has not died, but is very, very ill, and the reports of the friend's death are incorrect. So that's what we understand about it. He's, he's not very well. Look, and here's another one. Mino Rido's doctor. Mino is in an extremely critical conditions. He is fighting. So he's not dead at this moment in time, guys. Um, he's well enough, I guess, to tweet. Look, obviously, things can change pretty quickly. I personally think, um, you know, we should get some love hearts in the live chat, guys. That's what I think. Look, let, let's not pretend like we like the guy. But at the same time, I don't wish death upon anybody that doesn't deserve it, in my opinion. There's, there is some people that deserve it in this world who are absolute fucking scum and do horrendous things to other human beings. But, you know, in terms of what he's done in the grand scheme of things, I believe we should get some love hearts in the live chat. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Ten Arcs, Red, Jonathan Gallagher. I know, I know a lot of you don't like him, and I don't like him either, guys. I'm not saying he's an angel. Um, but, man, if somebody's fighting for their life, and uh, I, I, I personally think live, live and let live, you know what I mean? Live and let live, unless somebody's really affecting other people in a horrible, negative way. Live and let live, my friends. Okay. So let's see what you guys are saying in the chat as ever. Uh, what's my thoughts on Ruben Neves? Price tag 100 mil. It's ridiculous, ain't Evans? I mean, he's not worth that much. It's just preposterous. Yeah, that's right, Fadal Rayhan. It is fake news. Look at his Twitter. Absolutely, completely fake news. Being reported. As this video says, mate. It literally says fake news in the title, in the thumbnail of the video. Like, it is completely fake. The reports that he's come out that he's died are completely uh, wrong. So, a shame on a lot of different outlets. In fact, look at this, guys. So, let's just do a little bit of a shame bell, yeah? Let's just get the old shame bell out, right? Daily Mail, shame. Uh, Sky Sports, I think. Actually, no, maybe they didn't. Uh, 90 Mins, shame. Talk Sport, shame. <laughs> shame on these guys, man. Shame on all these outlets who reported that this guy's died, you know. I really think it's a disgrace. There you go. They haven't done their due diligence. They haven't done uh, their research. And um, it's quite a disgrace, really, isn't it? Yeah. Metro. Football agent Mino Riola dies after 54, after battle with lung cancer disease. Shame. Shame on Metro. Shame on Metro, mate. Shame. You know what I mean? Shame. <laughs> it's a disgrace. Sports Joe. Joe.ie. Shame. Football agent Mino Riola dies age 54. Shame. Um, <laughs> you know, football 365, shame. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop there, but you get the impression. So many different out out outlets have run with this story, and they don't even know the basis of the truth, so it's pretty disgusting. Yeah, I agree, Gangshi. 50 million at most for Neves, my mate, as well, I agree. Scott Corden says, predictions for tonight. My predictions? Pain. Um, I'm actually thinking we're going to lose. I'm sorry to say, but Manchester United right now, um, are about as convincing as a fishnet diaper. They're absolutely fucking gash. Wait, that sounded a bit messed up. But you know what I'm saying? It's fucking, they're gash. It doesn't do the job. They're shite. We've got to at least get some uh, people in here who are, uh, you know, going to do the job for us next season and fight for the club. I don't think this set of players are. Chelsea obviously are fighting for top four. I think they are a better team right now. And for those reasons, I think they'll probably beat us even though we're at home. Um, and I really hope that the lads can turn up and put in some sort of performance, but chances are they're going to shit the bed, aren't they? What's everyone's prediction for the game then? Go on then, let's do that. I've got some news about the game in a minute as well. We'll get into that after we cover this. But um, yeah, do get your opinions in, in the chat as to what you think the score is going to be. I'm going for one. I'm going for 2-1 to Chelsea, sadly. 2-1 to Chelsea is what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, make them do the raw because shame. Hey, Rushmon, I've got clock news. Okay, we'll have a look into that in a moment. Thank you very much, Rushmon. Don Wiggy, how are you today? Uh, hey, I'm doing good. Thank you, Daniel Tommy. The K Cadet has been a member of this channel for 20 months. K Cadet, man, he says, Piggy, I've been controversial again. Yeah, I saw some of the things you said at the start. Hey, look, that's your opinion, mate. If you want to be a scumbag, that's entirely up to you. <laughs> I'm joking. K Cadet, man, no, yeah, I wouldn't think anything. I wouldn't expect anything less, bud. <laughs> Guys, that's sick, though. He's supported this channel for 20 months. Yeah, that's right. 133 says, wow, 20 months. Seriously, K Cadet, thanks for so, thanks so much for supporting this channel for all that time, mate. And just being a hilarious legend in the live chat. Somewhat controversial, some may say, yeah. But also pretty fun, I would say. Thank you very much, K Cadet, for joining us. Um, all right, guys, here we go. Let's have a look at your prediction. So Olf793, what's going on, bro? He says 3-1 Chelsea, I feel. Draw says Naz, 2-2 says Hoodstar. 2-1 to Chelsea, Marco, going with what I'm thinking as well. Great minds think alike. 
Victor Camarasa says, if Ronaldo plays good, we win. If he doesn't, we lose. That's pretty much how it goes for us. Ooh, yes and no, Victor Camarasa. It's, if, if we can get the ball to him and he can take his chances, then yes. But we actually do have to do the fundamentals as well. Like, he could score two goals, and yet, you know, if we have an absolute debacle like we did against Arsenal at the back and the players shit the bed and they concede a couple of goals, it's all completely undone. So, yes, we do need Ronaldo to play well, but we absolutely do need to feed him and we do need to play well as a team. Overall, that's the key word here. We've been a gash team, mate. We need better team play. So hopefully they can actually stay organized for a full 90 minutes, not make any stupid errors. And that way, maybe we could get a result. But uh, I, I still think we can win, like you just said. We've got Ronaldo. Ronaldo is the X factor. He smashed up Spurs. He smashed up Norwich in recent weeks. If you give him the ball, we can score your goals. It's just about us staying organized. I think we're going to lose the midfield battle really, really badly tonight, guys. Just looking at who we've got available. Matic, McTominay, or whoever, you know, like whoever it is, really. It's not as good as Chelsea's midfield. They will batter us in midfield, I think, and that could be where we lose the game. But we just got to hope that whatever way that the players approach the game is a passionate one, a fiery one. We've got to hope that Ragnick sets them up to be organised and to deal with Chelsea in as best a way as possible. Uh, Primot says 3-2 to the Red Devils. What's up there, Primot? James T thinks 2-1 to Chelsea. Dibby thinks 3-1 to Chelsea. A draw, says Naz. JW92, yes, lad, says 3-0 Chelsea. United have been getting slapped recently. You can't see it stopping against Chelsea. Uh, just not the Man United we all once knew. It's very true. We're miles away from that, JW, mate. And then that's why I'm going for a loss as well. Usually I go into this game thinking, you know what, United, Chelsea, now we can smash them up. Especially having a look at the record recently because United's record at Old Trafford against Chelsea over the last few years. It's very favourable, um, but because of the form, because of where we're at now, because of the lack of bollocks and cojones and bottle in the team, I feel like we will probably get drubbed up, mate. It's a good shout. We probably will get drubbed up, lad. Um, oh, hang on. Let's get this quote up on the screen so anybody can see that that is the, the fake news uh, being reported by the outlets when they come in. 4-0 says Flabby. 4-1 says Alex Saxon. 3-1 says Amy Evans. 3-1 says Johnny. Um, oh, shit. We've got a super chat here. Sorry, I missed that. We got a super chat here from Sev the Panda. Thank you so much for the 200 rupee super chat, you legend. Sue! Guys, let's get a cheeky little Sue in the chat there for Sev. Appreciate you, man. He says, Jurgen Klopp is going to be here for another four years. Ugh. Oh, that's what it is. Thank you so much, uh, Sev the Panda, for getting in here. Appreciate that. That's horrible news, man. Are you fucking kidding me, man? No. Smash a like on the video and get yourself in there. Smash a Sue on the chat there for Sev. Let's have a look at this. David Ornstein, Jurgen Klopp. Oh, fucking hell, that's horrible. Thank you, Rushmano, for sending me that 20 minutes ago, by the way. I didn't think it was as big a news as that, so I just thought I'd carry on talking, but I should have had a look at this. Shit. Okay, so look. Oh, that's fucking horrible news, guys. I mean, that is really bad. I've got to say that's really bad. Let me just get that up on screen. Oh, fucking hell. That is really not cool, maybe. Just simply because Manchester United right now are way behind. Klopp and Liverpool are very far ahead. And at the moment, they're a well oiled machine. And it's unlikely that with him at the club, they're going to slow down anytime soon. So let's just show you this very quickly. So as we can see, we've got an exclusive here. David Ornstein is reporting from The Athletic that uh, Jurgen Klopp has today signed a contract extension to keep him at Liverpool until 2026. The 54-year-old German manager and his closest staff on deals to 2024. Uh, but have now prolonged them by two years. That is absolutely disgusting news, guys. Oh, let's get some gash emojis in the live chat for that one, guys. Gash, gash, gash. That is seriously gash. That is not what we need. Because, I mean, you know, like I say, I think once a good manager like that, who's had such an impact at a club, leaves, there's often a drop-off. And I'm expecting that to happen to Liverpool, and I'm expecting it to happen to City once Pep's gone as well. But as long as these guys are around, they're still going to keep winning, and they're still going to keep challenging, and that's the problem. Uh, thank you for the gash emojis, Cake and Stephen Carr and Flabby and everyone else as well. Um, yeah, it's really quite bad news that because like with Manchester United when Ferguson left or Arsenal when Wenger left, when a manager's been there a good, good long while and they've actually had a successful period and they leave, there is often an, a drop off. But now he's staying for another four years. Man, you can expect them to be a pretty damn good side for the next four years, really. Even though some of their players are getting on just a little bit, they are starting to bring good players through. And you have to say that Liverpool's recruitment over the last sort of years... Um, has been excellent. So, oh, man, terrible stuff, terrible stuff. Let's have a look at what you guys have said about this in the chat very quickly. That is really not very good, is it? That's not very good and not very nice news. Uh, Ryan Mark Williams says, what's scary is that we have no plan with the team with transfers and tactics. Players don't listen and the owners don't care as they're making a profit of the club. We're in a very bad state. Spot on, Ryan. What I just hope is that they 
give a little bit more freedom out to some of these guys, you know, start um, at letting people like Ralph Fanning actually advise the, 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 the where maybe the money's going. We're talking about me getting Paul Mitchell in, etc. Let's get proper footballing people in who are going to make key footballing decisions and let these owners just give the give the keys essentially over and handle, uh, let, the, let the football men handle the football business. And yes, they give us a budget and then and they, they spend it. But you know what I'm saying? I think you're absolutely right. While they're still here, we're just going to be shackled, mate, always. But we do need to get new players out, new players in. Hope that Ten Hag can manage what he's got here. Uh, old 793 says, brilliant news. One of the best managers in the world stays in England. Same with Pep. A hey, fair play. Well, you're a disgrace, mate. <laughs> fair play. I mean, it's not good news for us. It's not good news for us. I genuinely think he is a great manager. And because of that, he's going to do well with Liverpool for four years. Jonathan says, oh, God. Sean Eason says, I'm in love with him and I feel fine. Um, Classical Gashling says, did Riola actually die? No, he, he hasn't yet, mate. He's fighting for his life. His doctor's come out and said that... Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's not true and that he's fighting for his life and he's in intensive care, essentially. And Riola's tweeted this tweet, as you can see at the bottom in regards to that. They will never be around as long as Fergie, says the cake cadet. I agree. There's very, mu very much unlikely that anybody will match the career that he's had in terms of longevity and also success. But you have to look at the likes of Klopp and Pep and say that in this modern era where it has changed a little bit, there is a bit more competition as well. It is just, it is impressive what they've done and they continue to do it. And I can't see it stopping anytime soon. I really hope Pep gets bored at City and, and goes and they have a massive fall off. I really hope that they get sanctioned at some point by the Premier League for being a bunch of financial fair play, dodging, cheating bastards. Um, but at the same time, uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon, I don't think. They just make problems go away, don't they? So uh, Man City, Liverpool, these teams with their managers and their setups, they're going to be at the top for a while. It's on the likes of Ten Hag now to try and get this team to resemble something of a Manchester United team, sign the right sort of players, instill that belief and confidence and also mentality, tactics, style into the side. And hopefully we can uh, do well. Gung Shi, thank you for the super chat, mate. He says, Pig, you missed Rashmano's 29-month milestone message. No way. What a bottle merchant I am. Rashmano, hey, thank you, Gung Shi. Let's get a sue in the chat there for Gung Shi. Holy shit, we've got 190 legends watching. Smash that like button. Let's get 100 likes on the stream. Let's have a cheeky little bacon brigade. Like Spike, help us compete with the fake news outlets that report that people have died. Help us compete with the clickbait merchants, the charlatans, the corporations, and the shithouses by Stone Cold Stunning that like button. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you see my pain off. <laughs> hey, Kylie Madison, welcome in. How's you today? Thanks for joining us. Have you heard about the news about Klopp? He wasn't going anywhere, says the big guy. No, doesn't seem like he was going anywhere. Rushmano, sorry I missed that, bud. How have I missed it? Rushmano, thank you so much. He says, it's okay, though, because the board said we didn't need a midfield cover in January. Hashtag Glazers out. Oh, I know. It's a disgrace, isn't it? It's a disgrace, Rushmano, mate. How they didn't go and sign somebody in January to help Ragnik out is quite un unbelievable and beyond me. That's it. They don't care. They just They just care about the financial bottom line. And we know that, in all fairness. Hey, the Saint, what's going on, bro? How you getting on? Um, we've got also got Johnny Depp's world's first mega pint of wines is in here. Um, you think there's any substance to the truth to Frankie de Jong? Maybe a ditch. It depends. Is he, is he unhappy at Barcelona? Are Barcelona looking to make a lot of changes in the summer? I mean, if we don't get de Jong, we'll probably get some like Ruben Neves. Because I've heard that, that Ruben Neves is being offered to Barcelona by George Mendes and that he's interested mostly in going to Barcelona. Now, would Barcelona be interested in taking Ruben Neves? If they're not, I think it sort of paves the way clear for Manchester United to go in and get Ruben Neves. If they do get Ruben Neves, well, maybe they want to sell Frankie de Jong to us if he's surplus to requirements, if he's not part of their plans. Who knows what's going to go on? I personally don't think they would want to sell him. I think Xavi said as much in recent weeks. And, um, and I think that the problem is Manchester United just don't have Champions League football to be able to give these guys at this moment in time. And if he's at a club where there is Champions League football and they're a big profile club, it doesn't really make sense for him to, to go. But there is the Ten Hag factor, which we have to think about with his uh, history and relationship with, um, you know, with, uh, with this player, De Jong. So you've got, to, you've got to say that that is a factor. 100 million is too much. Yeah, Wolves are taking absolute piss, Jonathan Gallagher. There's no way that they're going to get 100 million for Ruben Neves. It's outrageous. But this is how negotiations work, dude. So, of course, they're not going to go in and say, hey, Manchester United, would you like to sign this player for 45 million pounds? And United come back and say, you know what? We'll give you 35 million. It's not really, you've got to negotiate, don't you? So what they're doing is they're setting their price ridiculously high. Man United or whoever will have to inquire and say, hey, look, 
let's be real about this. Can we include a player maybe? Can we do a deal with this month, this amount of money up front and then this amount of money over certain years? And it's not going to be anywhere near 100 million. So they're just setting a price high in order to be able to negotiate down and get themselves maybe 50 or 60 million pounds, I think. That's not realistic for them to get 100 million for him. Uh, it's crazy. And yeah, JW, we did a video on that yesterday, actually. You read that United were going to Phillips for 50 million. That's according to the BBC Sport. Yes, we did a little vid on that yesterday, actually, just in regards to Calvin Phillips, the situation there. He's a lead scummer, obviously. He's leads through and through. He's born in Leeds. He's proper Leeds. That's going to be the biggest stumbling block as to whether or not he would actually go and play for Man United. It's obviously a massive step on, up in career and wages and everything. So you'd think from a professional point of view, he might consider it. Um, but because of the Leeds link, it's might maybe not the most likely either. But hey, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I think he would be a good player um, for us. Absolutely. He's industrious. He's going to somebody get this, the, 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 the play going. He wins the ball back, loves to tackle. You know, we need a player who's good at that and can carry the ball and can pass well. I do like Ruben Neves better. Who do you guys prefer, Ruben Neves or Calvin Phillips? Those are the two midfielders that in the last couple of days have been talked about the most um, in the media for United. There are loads of other players as well, like Chua Mane being linked, but he's also linked with moves to Spain and, and uh, even Liverpool in there, etc. Um, so who would you rather have, Neves or Calvin Phillips? Uh, Sports Fervor, yes, lad. He says, De Jong, Bruno Phillips, midfield of dreams. If you build it, they will come. That's right, mate. Absolutely. Ten Hag. That's what Ten Hag hears when he goes to sleep in his cornfields at night. If you build it, they will come. I hope so, mate. I hope so. I hope we do manage to bring good players in. Neves all day, says David Srinivasan. Neves, says AR Dan. Uh, do we really want a lead Scoomare? That's a fair point, guys. I mean, what I'd say about him, though, is in terms of the types of player, though, we do need somebody who's a bit rough and ready. We do need somebody that battles. We do need somebody that shows heart on the pitch. And he actually, off the pitch, seems like a pretty nice guy. I mean, I don't know the guy. Um, but <laughs> I know he's a lead scummer, but as far as lead scummers go, I'm just saying, he's not too bad. Calvin doing bits as Miss Fight Week. Neves all day, says the Saint. Looks like Neves is the one for the chat. The big guy thinks Neves. Gung, she thinks Neves. Hey, Mark86, he says, I would try to trade Rashford for De Jong to give us more of a budget. I think he's had enough to prove it, time to prove himself. Respect, Mark86. I, I agree with you nearly. I think he needs just a few more months in the new in the new season. Look, if he's given chances by Ten, Ten Hag next season and he starts like he's doing now and he plays like he's doing now, even just for a couple of months, that's it. I think we know that Marcus Rashford's finished and it's just going to be another flop because he's he's got to start showing something. He's got to show fight and desire and actually show a bit of bollocks. He hasn't done any of those things for United recently. He's just shriveled up. We need to see more from him. Absolutely. It's a terrible, terrible season for Marcus Rashford. I think in terms of expectation and in terms of stature in the squad and in terms of performances, I think he is almost the worst player, along with Harry Maguire, in my opinion, for stature, for what they're supposed to be in terms of their role in the team, etc. Him and Harry Maguire are the two biggest worst performers this season for us. He's really had a stinker. So, yeah, it's time for him to uh, step up. I think the new guy coming in with a new approach, new tactics, arm around the shoulder, might be able to revitalise Rashford's career. So I'm not saying get rid of this guy just yet because he does deserve a chance. Remember last season, he did score a lot of goals for us and the season before, he's done really well. He's actually had a really good few years apart from this season. So I'm not ready to chuck him out just yet. Guys, keep Rashford or sell Rashford. Let us know. He is worth a lot of money. You could maybe generate £70 million sterling for this guy, maybe more, um, because he is a ridiculously expensive player with a big, with a lot of time left in his future. And he's, uh, he's only getting better, you would think. Well, I say he's only getting better. It's not really, is he? But he could get better. He could turn the corner. Uh, yeah, that's right, Sports Favour. Lots of players out on loan as well. I'm expecting a lot of youth players to be brought into the team next season. Players that are out on loan right now, such as Ghana, Mengi. Rushmano says we've got 87 likes. A hey, getting them. We're closing in on the 100. Let's be having you. Um, yeah, let Rashid go, to be honest, says Razak. To be honest, he might be better off in another league. It's a fair point. I'm sure he would be in a farmer's league or something like that. But um, I think, come on, he's, he's bank born and bred, my son. David Frinish Vassen, thank you so much for your super chat, David. For the 10 SGG lad, get in there. So appreciate you, man. He says, let's never lose focus on how toxic the club has become with the Glazers in charge. Even Ten Hag will struggle, mate. Trust me on that. Empty promises for years. David, David, David. Yeah, you don't have to teach your grandmother to suck eggs on this one, my son. I know. <laughs> the Glazers are absolutely shithouses. I do know. And um, I think they will, to a degree, obviously, shackle whichever manager comes in said this many times, it's the biggest poison chalice job going because there's so much pressure on it and he's going to come in and um, have to deal with not only 
the the gash squad that's there and the other teams that he's up against in the Premier League who are really good teams right now. He's also up against the board and he's up against the owners who do not give us full investment, who do shackle us, who do seem to make poor decisions, who don't give the, the managers what they need. If they gave the managers what they need, then Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would have been allowed to buy a central defensive midfielder in the summer. And we certainly would have been able to add one when we absolutely obviously needed one in January. And how's about the season before? We're top of the table in January. Who remembers that, guys? United, top of the table. Man, if there was ever a time to just have a little bit of investment in a poor position in the in the team, i.e. the midfield, and strengthen and try and really consolidate your position and challenge for the title, it was then. It was then to spend a cheeky 40 or 50 million pounds last January when Ollie was here. They didn't do it. They bottled it. We're actually top of the league then. They could have maybe had a proper charge for the title if they'd have just got the right guy in. And they fucking bottled it, guys. They don't bother. They don't spend the money. So I know, David Trinovas, you're absolutely spot on. And let's get a massive... Uh, uh, green and gold emoji in the live chat there for David Trinavasan. Uh, he's absolutely spot on and uh, the, whoever comes in is going to be up against it. I just hope that Ten Hag can actually get the team playing well, that he can manage the, the youth players we've got there. Because let's face it, if we do the right sort of thing, which is the right sort of rebuild, as in not just going out there and buying 10 new Galactico type players, which they're not going to let us do anyway, but sign, you know, five really good players this window and then have a look at getting youth players brought through. Ten Hag has done that loads of times um, over in over in, in uh, the Netherlands because he's had to for Ajax. They'd sell a lot of their key players every single year and they also have to develop new talents um, and their youth recruitment and their youth network and just their whole youth development system is absolutely second to none. So in terms of what he can do in terms of bringing the young players through and hopefully getting the best out of them, that's going to be something that he can bring to the table. So in terms of actually getting the best out of the squad, we need somebody to be able to do that. I get it. The Glazers are shit owners. They're absolutely terrible owners, but he's still, we need a manager that can still perform, even though the owners are absolutely gassed because they're not going anywhere at this moment in time. So you do need somebody that can come in and and, uh, and develop this squad and get the mentality going the right way, even with the gash owners that we've got. Thank you, Arnaz Karil, for subscribing to the channel, you legend. Welcome aboard. Yeah, do hit the old subscribe if you're new to the channel. Get yourself involved. You only need to be subbed for one minute to chat. We're on our way to 57,000 subscribers. So if you're new to this channel and it's your first time here, do get yourself involved by smashing the old subscribe. Uh, Ryan Mark Williams says, two-ply toilet paper is uh, a must at our club as there's too much shitting going on. <laughs> they definitely shit the bed a lot, don't they, my son? That's true. Um, okay, Kieran Mallion says, Ten Hag coming in with 12 bottles of Jade Fluid to clean his club up. Like that scene from Four Lions. Kieran Mallion, fair play to you, Kieran. I mean, he does need to get some serious cleaning going on at this club. Get a lot of these players out and uh, instill a new, different sort of mentality in the dressing room. Hello there, Bruno Martins. What's going on? Hey, we've smashed 100 likes on the stream. Get in there. Thank you, Nathan Gibbs. Nice one. Oi, oi, Savaloy. You'd rather give Charlie McNeil the opportunity to play for the next uh, 11 for the 11 next season, for the first 11 next season, rather than Rashford. Sell Rashford says, I will follow you. Okay, you know what? This is a bit of a hot topic. I'm going to, it seems like there's a few people pretty passionate about this in the live chat. I'm just going to put Rashford question mark, keep or sell. We're going to do a little poll in the live chat there, guys. Everybody do have a little vote if you have, if you want. Big ups there, Niall Kane. How you been, man? Hope you're doing well. Yes. Abdullah Gaiman's in here. Uh, will there be conference league watch along? Sexy? Abdullah, mate, get out. Chimney Decoria says, we shouldn't sell Rashford now. I'm interested to know how we'll play under Ten Hag. Spot on. I agree with that statement. Smash a one if you agree with me. And also Chinmay Takuria that we at least need to see how he does under Ten Hag. You know, maybe Ten Hag can revitalize him. And with a new role in the team, with a new system, a playing style, whatever, a tactics approach, maybe Rashford will come good again. Smash a one in the live chat if you think that Ten Hag should at least be given uh, an opportunity to... to play with Rashford for the season what's the worst that can happen guys he either has a stinker of a start to the season and then you have to sell him in um in in, in January or you, you actually revitalize him and he comes good again I say you've got to give him the chance Matata says two get rid Kingslayer says one but don't give him a huge contract oh yeah if they gave him a new contract now that'd be a disgrace he's absolutely got to prove himself to get a new contract the re reports actually recently that we're looking at giving him a new contract maybe even players like Luke Shaw too they've got to earn it man Jonathan Gallagher thinks that we should keep him. T-Mill thinks we should keep him. Don't be rash, he says. Um, Razak thinks sell him. Okay, fair play. A little bit split. Amy Evans says keep him. Tad Bates, what's going on? He says get rid of rash. Sell him to PSG. 
Fair enough. I think if anybody could uh, afford him and could afford his wages and would want him, it would be them. After all, he did have a really good performance against them once. Ryan says, Pig, do you think they will sell Ronaldo? As there is talk they want him gone, says Ryan. I mean, there is talk about this. I mean, how would Ten Hag? Ten Hag would obviously be absolutely smoking that finest of the Netherlands. Um, you know, uh, smokest of the Netherlands finest. If, uh, if he thinks that Ronaldo needs to be gone. Ronaldo's the best player on the team still. He's still scoring the goals. He's still a match winner. If you can feed the goat, he will score. Uh, Marco Van Basten was talking the other day. Um, and he said something along the lines of, Ronaldo is an individual player, but if you can actually feed that individual player, he's fucking brilliant. And I sort of agree with that. That's it. You know, he might not be the biggest team player. He might not do the most for the team. Um, actually, he's he gets a little bit of a bad credit in that sense because I see him working quite bloody hard for the team a lot of the time. But he is 37. He can't run around like a teenager anymore. Uh, Mark Harris, thank you for the $2 super chat. He says, sell the bum. He thinks so, Rashford as well, fair play. 59% of the live chat so far saying sell, and they agree with you, Mark Harris. Well, fair play, wow, he has had a stinker of a season. Marky Harris, thank you so much. Let's get a sue in the chat for Mark Harris, you don. And also, first class gamer, 21 months, a legend of the bacon and egg brigade. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for 21 months, man. Everyone, let's get a mad love heart in there for first class gamer. And of course, Matty Rushmano, who was 29 months, a legend earlier on as well and cake it at 20 months uh, so i feel like did i even acknowledge rush is again i've forgotten that now <laughs> but, <laughs> but hey first class game you're an absolute bloody legend thank you so so much for supporting this channel for all that time mate. that's actually quite mad 21 months that payment has been coming out of your account lad you're a fucking legend <laughs> thank you so much he says pig what do you expect from ten hog next season achievement wise and the season after ps it was my birthday yesterday oh man first class gamer happy birthday dude Happy birthday. I'm not going to do that, actually. But hey, happy birthday in First Class Gamer. You bloody legend. Everyone, let's get a cake emoji, a birthday cake emoji, some balloons and stuff in the live chat. Happy birthday to you, First Class Gamer. You had a great day, man. Hope you had a great day. You must be a bit, a bit more happy these days about arse and Holands. Um, but anyway, he says, Pig, what do you expect from 10 Nile next season? Okay, so I think he's going to finish. I think we're going to finish fifth. I, I don't want to be Mr. Negative around here. He could get top four. Of course he could if he signs the right players. If we do really well and just a little bit goes our way and he's got them playing a certain way by Christmas and then we just finish the season strong, I could see us getting top four. I really could. Don't think anybody's dislodging the title challenge at the moment from Liverpool or City. So they're guaranteed, in my opinion, at the moment to take first and second place. Chelsea, uh, we they might drop off because of what's going on in the club, but they also might not. Uh, you've also got Tottenham, who are maybe there and thereabouts. Arsenal could be improving. Probably not. Newcastle, maybe if they spend big in the summer, and sign key sign-ins, and hopefully come and get some players from us, like Slabby Maguire, then, uh, you know, they, they might, <laughs> well, no, if they get Slabby Maguire, they're doomed, but you know what I'm saying, like, if they sign big players, they sign the right players, improve their squad, Eddie Howe's done brilliantly since he's been there, his uh, his record's really, really good, he's got them up to ninth in the league, I think if we have the right investment, he is a good manager, I think he could get into the, you know, into the top six, top six, um, and even surprise a few people, so for that reason, it's tough, it's just a little bit tougher for Manchester United right now in Ten Hag, I'm going to say fifth, guys. What does everybody think? I'm saying fifth, sadly. Top four would be very nice, um, but it's tough. Elf says top four is not for at least two seasons, then you may kick on, says Elf793. We might even have to go backwards before we go forwards a little bit because there's so many big-time overpaid prima donna meltbags at this football club um, coming in, you know, that, uh, that need to go. And in order to get rid of them, it's going to take maybe a couple of transfer windows to get them all gone. Then you need to replace them, obviously. That's going to take time. <clears throat> so I don't think it's an easy, quick fix at Manchester United for Ten Hag. I think it is going to take a year of a bit of gashness before we really, really start getting in there. But I think next season, uh, first class came and said, what about the second season? I think next season he should absolutely be challenging, you know, for top three. N not this next season coming up. I mean, the season after. So obviously he needs one full season just to get the crap out, get the right players in, start the rebuild, get the philosophy changed, get the youth players coming through, all the rest of it that he wants to do. And then after that, he's got, you know, United's a huge club with huge resources with a great squad. Well, I say a great squad, but you know what I mean? By then, hopefully a great squad. We should absolutely be able to challenge for, you know, the top three in the second season, his second full season. That's what I think. And then after that, let's go for the title, baby. Uh, Gung, she says, might get top four next season. Let's wait and see. Yeah, you just never know, do you? United to finish sixth purely because of lack of efforts as scouts on. Well, in this current squad, yeah. In this current season, yeah. But obviously when the new guys come in, hopefully that won't be the case. Hey, we've got a um, 
Thank you so much, Rashmana, for giving us an update here on Ruben Nevers just come in. So uh, Fabrizio Rom Romano has given us an update uh, today. Oh, okay. Let's just have a look at this and get this up on the screen for you guys. Um, so Fab Romano has just tweeted out. It says, Wolves manager Bruno Lage on Arsenal and Man United's potential targets, Ruben Nevers. Uh, and I'll just get it up on the screen for you guys to see. Okay, so uh, here it is, guys. If we just take a little look at this, you can see there's an update from Fabrizio Romano. It says Wolves manager Bruno Lage on Arsenal and Man United potential target Ruben Neves. Quotes from him, we need to be ready for everything. A player like Ruben Neves has a value of £100 million. Anything can happen, not just with Ruben. Yeah, so uh, that's what was um, being mentioned earlier on as well. We are talking about, you know, a hundred million pounds. We were discussing that figure for him. It's just absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? It's just absolutely ridiculous. One hundred million pounds is not going to be the target that they get. But like I say, it's all part of the negotiation, guys. That's what. That's all it is. It's just part of him coming in and saying, you know, well, we want as much money as we can possibly get. That's all it is. They're not going to get a hundred million pounds for Ruben Neves. No way. It's going to be hard for them to keep hold of a player like that. If really, if Manchester United and Barcelona and these type of teams come knocking, even Arsenal. Um, it's like it's difficult for these teams like Wolves to keep hold of them because as, as good as Wolves are and as good as they can be, they're never going to be a top four side or playing in Champions Leagues. And the best they can hope for is some Europa League guff. And that's if they have a really, really great season. And the chances are in a couple of seasons, they're probably fucking relegated. So, you know, that's uh, that's the reality of its team like Wolves. They're not a huge club, whereas Manchester United, even without Champions League football and Barcelona, they are huge clubs. And so the law of going to play for one of those teams is just much, much greater than staying at Wolves, in my opinion. Come on, he's had a great few years at Wolves. I'm sure he loves Wolves. Um, I'm sure he fucking loves Wolves. But at the same time, like he's got to want to progress his career. And from him as a point of view, as an individual, if there was a knock on the door... If Manchester United come knocking, if Barcelona come knocking, he's going to make it. He's, he's going to not be happy about not being allowed to go for less than a hundred million pounds, is he? He doesn't want to be priced out of the market. You know, it's of course that's not going to happen. They're not going to get that amount of money for him. The Saints says thirty million fair price. That's too low. <laughs> it's too low in this day and age. I think fifty million pounds is a good offer. And if they wanted to do a bit of business, as I've said, with other players, then maybe we could do that. Because think about it. Um, there are players that they could probably want from Manchester United that we would want to get rid of. For instance, they could do a lot worse than Eric Bailly. They could do a lot worse than uh, Diogo Dallo. They could do a lot worse than Aaron Wan-Bissaka. They could do a lot worse than Tellez. You know, there's a lot of players that they could do a lot worse than, in all fairness, that, uh, that are decent signings for them. They're not great signings for us, and maybe financially they wouldn't be able to afford some of these guys' wages, etc. But um, you would have to say that there are some deals that could be done, maybe going in the opposite direction to sweeten this deal and bring the price tag down a bit too. Yeah, fair enough. Any says 50 million plus player or two. Depends on the player. I still think they're asking too much money for this guy. I mean, I get it though. They don't have to sell. We're in that era of modern football now where all the teams have got money who are in the Premier League because of the commercial TV deals. Everybody just gets £100 million smack in the bank every single start of the season. And, and more than that. And then all the sponsorship deals that are brought in from the clubs. Everything. They make a fortune now, all these Premier League football clubs. So they don't have to sell. In, the, in like Fergie's era, if Man United came knocking with a big money offer, it's like too good to turn down for a lot of these clubs and they just couldn't keep them. But um, but now it's like very much a, a more level playing field, which is great. It's a more level playing field, and so it's difficult for um, you know, clubs to to uh, to, to, to sign other. Look at how much we had to pay for Harry Maguire, guys. You know, Leicester didn't want to sell him to us. Eighty million quid for that guy. So you do have to pay a premium, especially to convince a player to go from or a team to sell a player from one Premier League club to another. So it's definitely going to have to be a, an expensive amount of money. I could say £60 million, maybe, but as a maximum. But if Manchester United spend more than that, it just doesn't really actually make that much sense because there's so many different areas of the team that we need to strengthen and the budget's only going to be so much. Yeah, great shout on Jude Bellingham there. I think you're, uh, you're spot on with that. Neil Duffin, how are you doing today, you legend? Hope you're doing well. And A-Bub's in here as well. Thank you for joining us. So many legends getting in. 165 legends watching smash that like button get yourself involved in the chat uh let us let's us hear your thoughts and opinions on anything we're discussing here we have got a bit of transfer news and some latest united updates to get into uh 30 million and Maguire says any evans 60 million no way bro says the same it's that's the max that's the maximum that they could possibly get for him i think that's what i'm saying the maximum that they could get for him would be 60 million and i think 40 to 50 million but more like 50 million in this current climate with this market 
I could say that he's a 50 million pound player. Razak says, kind of done with English players. I could see Declan Rice being a flop here also. He could be the CDM Slabby Maguire, mate. You don't want to spend that much money on any player right now if you're Man United because it just eats up too much of the budget. Uh, Sports First says, once, it, once United's name is involved, players' price gets doubled. Spot on, Sports Further. But we don't want to play hardball with anyone. That's the thing. If these teams really want to try and take Man United for the cleaners because they know we're desperate, they know we need to sign these players, um, and we, they know we've got the money, then uh, we should just look elsewhere. It's as simple as that. We've got to stop over by overplaying for players. But if they want to do a proper deal, Rushy says, uh, Rushy 67 says, Maguire plus 45 million. Let's completely decimate the Wolves team. <laughs> I like your style, mate. That's going to definitely scupper any sort of deal though, isn't it? They don't want him. Um, Conrad Lima, 15 million. Hey, there you go. I will follow it. And there's even other players, youngsters, maybe like Kamara, who could be available for pretty much now. Uh, you pay someone 30 minutes to take Maguire. Exactly. Scouts Don. Basuma's another cheaper option, David Lee. He's understood to have a, a, a price tag of around about 35 to 40 million. Whether or not Brighton would like to sell him. And then there's another player as well, Tienemans over at Leicester, who's because he's not got... Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure his contract's running out maybe next summer, is it, or soon enough. Uh, let's just have a look at Tienemans. But because of that, he's actual price tag his valuation is not as high as the quality of the player that he actually is because his contract runs out um just trying to find the actual date but um it's i think it's next summer he's, he's not got two it's not this year but it's he's not got too long left on his contract for that reason um his price tag is not as huge as some of the other players as well tiedemans would be a good shout it's a little bit more value and if tiedemans really says to the to leicester that he doesn't want to sign a new contract and he wants to leave well, then they're going to do a deal, aren't they? They're going to do a deal and try and get as much money as they can from this summer rather than just letting him peter out and go on a free next year. I'm not talking about this year, but next year is when he's supposed to, his contract will go out. Jack Abernathy says Tiedemans would be great. Yeah, you don't trust Tiedemans, says Abe Barb. Why not? Tiedemans is a good quality player, good all-round uh, creative player as well as, you know, uh, industrious player. Let's just have a look at Tiedemans' stats this season. I bet they're actually not too bad at all from what I've seen. So, uh Tiedemann's statistics this season. For a start, he's only 24. And he's got Premier League experience. He's got 49 caps for Belgium, four goals. I mean, that's a great level of experience from all that Premier League experience for a 24-year-old to have. You can't put a price on that as well. Like, we won't worry about players coming into the Premier League. We know this guy can play in the Premier League. Um, we know he can play. So look at this. I mean, in, in this season in the Premier League, he scored, he's, he's played 27 games. He scored six. He's got two assists. You know, he's 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 done he's done a he's done a good job for uh, Leicester this season. Last season, similar figures as well. You know, um, but of course he's a, he's an industrious sort of player. So in my opinion, Tienemans would be a good signing. I've always said if you had the midfield from Leicester and just plonked him in Man United's midfield at the moment, both Ndidi and Tienemans, um, then you would actually see a very very good uh, improvement in Manchester United because simply, you know, that's what we're missing. But he's uh, he's a you know he's a, he's 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 a good player. He's he's good on the ball. He's good. Uh, he's he's just a good player, guys. I really like Tienemans. Tienemans twenty five million says Sim Sim. Well, maybe not quite that cheap, but certainly cheap. Thirty or forty million pounds somewhere around there for a player like that. Tienemans never seemed to young says Raw put it. Wow, what a midfield that would be. De Gea cannot fit for ten hogs says the Saint. I think he can. I think he can. He can adapt. He's got to be given a chance. He deserves to be given a chance for being our, one of our goatest players of all time, in all fairness. Not really. I mean, well, he is brilliant. Gangshi, thank you so much for the super chat again, mate, you legend. He says, we always get bent over when we buy players, especially English players, but get fleeced when we sell players. It's about time we start adding the English player tax when we're selling to other clubs. So true. Why is that? You know what it is, though? It's our own fault, Gangshi. It's because of the bad wage structure and everything at our football club. So we do pay players too much. We give them stupid contracts. And then they, then when we want them gone, it's like their value goes down because they're on big wages and that club's going to have to pay those wages. Um, otherwise, that player's not going to want to go for a lot less money. So uh, that's the problem we have. That's why I think we get less money when we sell them. Because we just pay players too much when they don't deserve it. We give Rashford a 200k contract, a 200k a week contract. Maguire's on 180k a week. You know, we give Phil Jones new contract. Jesse Lingard, 100 grand a week. And all these players that probably don't deserve it and then they're, and they're getting huge money so yeah i think that's it's our own doing there in my opinion it's our own doing the saint says the wages are ridiculous at united yeah hopefully we start to sort that whole structure out because it's a disgrace um but also yeah we do seem to get fleeced when we sell these players that's true yeah performance-based contracts that would be nice 
Glazes the gash, the whole structure up. So true, Gunshi. That's exactly what's happened, man. Declan Rice is more box to box. And Tiedemans isn't a physical get stuck in type of player. We need someone pacey, but also strong, says Andy Young. Um, yeah, well, I think we need two midfielders in the summer. As I've mentioned, we need somebody who's a more destructive type defensive midfield player. And then we also need to sign a more box to box player um, who can create and maybe get you some goals as well. Uh, but he's also good enough, robust enough defensively to do a job there. But also, you've got to have that proper destroyer in the central defensive midfield position. At the moment, it's either Matic or Fred. It's not really good enough. We need somebody better. Uh, that's why if we had like Ndidi and Tielemans and that duo, then we'd be sorted because we've got that destroyer who's also good on the ball. We've got that more box-to-box -box player who can create and get your goal. And it just makes sense. There's a nice balance there. We, I actually think we need two players in the midfield in this summer, not just one. OK, we've got Donny van der Beek coming in. Maybe he can play that role for Ten Hag if he really wants to give him that chance. But I do think we actually need to sign like a, a, a proper defensive midfielder and then a more box-to-box -box creative midfielder. Two of them. Because right now, we're going to be left with McTominay and Fred in the summer. Matic is going. Pogba's going. Yeah, OK, we can bring Garner in as well. But I think two proper first-team choice midfielders is what we need. Flabby says, pigs out here bargain hunting players for United to buy like he's looking for pint-sized ice cream. <laughs> I am bargain hunting, mate. That's what we have to do. We can't really go and spend loads of money on a couple of players. Look at Ajax. Let's go and raid Ajax for Anthony. You know, Jurian Timber maybe is a good option. There's a couple of youngsters. And if we sell players, we could send, spend a lot of money on players. That's the thing. If we could get Maguire gone and, and bank 40 mil, all these players are going anyway. Pogba's contract is off the books. Cavani's contract is off the books. Mata, Matic. So many big big money contracts are going off the books. Lingard. Uh, so they'll save a lot of money, be able to spend more money in the summer anyway, based on that. But if they also do more business, like getting Martial gone, wan gone, whoever, maybe some of these players that we might not expect to go at the moment, uh, they could generate a lot more money. Just in regards to Wan-Bissaka, guys, I've got an, uh, an article here um, uh, about uh, Wan-Bissaka that Crystal Palace are interested in re-signing him um, from Manchester United, but on a loan sort of basis. So apparently Crystal Palace reportedly considering making an attempt to re-sign Aaron Wan-Bissaka on loan from United during the summer's transfer window. Uh, that maybe with an option to buy or something like that. I don't know. The 24-year-old moved to Red Devils in 50 million for 50 million deal in 2019. Quite outrageous we paid 50 mil for Wambasaka, but in all fairness, like up until a point, I was really impressed with Wambasaka. It's just got to the point now where you found that he's quite one dimensional. He's a great defender, and that's very important in the right team. And if you're a team that is sort of up against it a lot of the time, then maybe that would be good. But for a team that needs to create, and you know, especially with a team that wants to play a modern way with wing backs bombing forward and getting balls into the box. You need somebody who can deliver a better quality of balls. And unfortunately, he can't seem to do that. He's 24 now, you know. He's not a kid. And he's he's not quite up to the level that I think is what's required for an all-round right back. I do really like him defensively. I think he's the best one we've got defensively. But that only gets you so far in this modern day and age. Look at the likes of, you know, Trent Alexander-Arnold at, um, at Liverpool. You've got to have a bit more to your game. Another £50 million flop. Sell him. Loan him, says T-Mill. Okay, so let's have a little vote on Aaron Wambasaka, guys. Sell or keep Aaron Wambasaka? What's your thoughts on him? My thoughts are, um, I'm actually quite mixed on him. I really like Wambasaka. In all fairness, I like how he's gone about it over the years. I like how he's been a defensive beast, the spider. Aaron Wambasaka. I, I, I would like to see him given a chance. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Yes, you can generate cash for him. Uh, I would like to see him given a chance under Ten Hag, but look. I can understand he won't fit necessarily in a Ten Hag system. And Ten Hag does want to play an attacking style and have wing backs bom bombing forward and stuff. He's okay at it, but he's just not great, man. That's the problem. We need somebody better. We need somebody that can really like get you a lot of assists. Look at how many assists Trent gets for Liverpool. You know, Reese James, players like this. We've got to, we've got to have a look at you know evolving in those areas. Yeah, Pogba's leaving is like a dream come true. Keep says uh, Horgy. Sell says Kingslayer. Cell says Pat, Cell says Templar, Cell says David and Abub and Razak. Uh, everyone's saying Cell here. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> Mark Harris, thanks for the super chat. He says Cell the bum too. <laughs> Fair play, mate. Lot, all of you nearly saying Cell. I, I like wan -Bissaka. I think if you're looking at mentality-wise, over the years, he's more of what we need at Manchester United. Somebody's prepared to get stuck in, who works hard, who runs his socks off. Um, he hasn't, okay, he didn't impress me in the last time he played, actually, but before that, I've always been quite... I've had quite a lot of time for Wambasaka. I know he's not good going forward, but he's the sort of player you could do with having around. But is he worth 50 million? Is it worth to have a sort of option or a backup be 50 million pounds? 
when you can go and maybe sell him for 35 now, is he 35 million pounds worth of backup player? Doesn't really quite, he's, that's what he probably will be. Because United you know, do need to have a look at improving that area of the pitch. So maybe they could sell it, make, make sell him cash in, get some money. He's got two years left on his contract. The club have an option to extend the agreement for a further season until 2025. So that's the situation with Wambasaka. Crystal Palace, of course, developed this guy. Uh, he represented them between 2009 and 2019. Represented their team on 46 occasions before uh, making the move to Old Trafford. So literally coming through the system and everything. They've got a big interest in taking him back. I've forgotten to do the vote, says T-Mail. All oh, right, okay, yeah. I'm actually just still going to leave it on the Rashford one. You're right, though. I should have done that. <laughs> it was a bit late now, but yeah, you're right. I'm going to end that poll there anyway. 123 likes on the stream. Thank you, everyone, for joining and getting in here. Really, really appreciate you all joining uh, for the Man United news today and the Riola news. If you're just joining, the Riola news is that it's fake and um, there were reports that he had died earlier and that's all BS. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. Let's have a look at this, guys. We've got big news in regards to Paul Mitchell, guys. Look at this. So um, it looks like Fabrizio Romano has been speaking with five. And, uh, oh, nice, 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 nice. This is good stuff, guys. Let's have a little cheeky look at this update from Fabrizio Romano, guys. Just give me one moment. So, yes. Um, where are you? There it is. Okay, have a look at this one, guys. So, new update from Fabrizio Romano just this afternoon. Manchester United are negotiating with Paul Mitchell to appoint him as technical director from Fabrizio Romano via five. Oh, get in there, my son. This is good news. We need somebody, more football men coming in who have a good track record of recruitment and bringing the right guys in and have actually been able to control, you know, control and, um, and uh, get the best out of um, the, the different staff, you know, different, different outlets available to them, being able to recruit, being able to sign players effectively. These are all things that we've done poorly over the years. Sell players effectively. All these sorts of things. Get rid of Bissaka, says Mark Egan. He's useless. Well, fair enough. I can understand it. He's not had a good good recent like year or, year or six months, six months to a year. Paul Mitchell would be the sign of the season. That's right, Rushy 6-7 Army. Absolutely big news about Paul Mitchell there. That is fantastic. I hope that's true, mate, because he has got a good track record. Um, you know, He's at Monaco at the moment. He's worked for uh, clubs like Spurs before, signing players like... Sun Young Min overseeing that, doing really good bits for teams like RB Leipzig, etc. He's a good footballing man. So we've not got enough of that in the club. We've had a bunch of wanky ban bankers, fucking merchant bankers running our football club for a long time now. It'd be nice to get a few more proper proper people in who have a track record of running football clubs would be nice to a good standard. But yeah, that's right, Billy. Negotiating. Glazers counting the pennies out again. Hey, Mark Harris says, Paul, Phil Mitchell, get out my pub, you slag. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually Paul Mitchell, but hey, respect, mate. Get out my pub. <laughs> um, that's brilliant. Darren Fletcher, current technical director, says, Billy, yeah, that's right. I mean, what the fuck has he been doing anyway? Technical box director. He just stands in the technical box and directs. That's literally what he... <laughs> I didn't know it was a literal sense for technical director. Stands in the technical box and directs. That's all he does is shout fucking bullshit from the sidelines, mate. <laughs> anyway... Thank you so much, Mark Harris, for the $5 super chat that you legend. Let's get a mad sue and a love heart in there for Mark. Right, just a couple of more topics to get on to, guys, today. Uh, of course, the game's on later. It's going to be on at uh, 7.45. Yeah, 7.45. So we're going to get on here at 7.15 for the watch along. Make sure you come back later for that. Um, but also, yeah, that's big news. So Man United reporting or reports that Manchester United negotiate with Paul Mitchell to appoint him as technical director. Fantastic news. Get this guy in. That's what we could do with more proper football and men helping this football club. Couple more stories then, guys. We've got uh, Milinkovic Savage offered a chance to sign um, for Manchester United, apparently, or United apparently reportedly asked, uh, have a chance to sign him from Lazio this summer if we want to. 12 assists and 43 appearances in all contribution, 27 years of age. Uh, Ten Hag's allegedly keen for two central midfielders this summer with Pogba and Matic leaving. And according to a report in, in Italy, Correa del Sporto, amongst others, reporting that United have handed the opportunity to sign Milinkovic Savic in the upcoming market with his agent, Matteo Kesman, preparing to hold talks with his client. Tottenham, Hotspur and Fulham have also recently been credited with an interest in the Serbian international who could potentially be available for a fee of around about 80 million euros. Probably just another one of those players that's too much money that's linked to United this summer, but there is a link there. 
Uh, Robert Lewandowski's agent is holding talks with Bayern Munich on Thursday, apparently. So there's lots of talks about Barcelona being keen to sign this guy um, during the summer's transfer window. And United have also been credited of having some interest. But obviously, we're not going to be able to pull that off because he blatantly wants to play at the top tier in Champions League football. We don't have that. Maybe if we did have Champions League football, we could go and get something like that. Probably wouldn't be the right fit for us right now anyway, just because he is older. We need somebody who's going to be here a while and is getting better. But according to uh, Fabrizio Romano, Lewandowski's agent, Sir Harvey, is currently in Munich and will hold talks with Bayern on Thursday over his client's future. Romano claims that Barcelona has been working on a deal with him uh, for weeks, but are yet to make contact with Bayern to discuss a possible summer move. So just in regards to Lewandowski, he's been doing bits as always. Um, he's, he's, he's actually scored 48 times in 43 appearances and contributed six assists. Those are just some ridiculous stats from Robert Lewandowski this season. Um, also, he's hinted that he could be on the move during the summer um, and there's a fee of around 33 million thought to be required to sign him. So quite interesting. Not too much for a player like that. Anyway, so uh, Chris Koo's got in here with a five pound super chat as well. Thank you, Chris Koo. Nice one, bro. He says, what's up, pig? Just want to say, just want to say, so glad I found your channel, mate. Look forward to more of your content. Keep up the good work, brother. Oh, thank you so much there, Chris Koo. Cool, cool, cool. Let's get some dove emojis in the live chat there, please, for Chris Koo. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, Chris. That's a very nice comment, mate. Really appreciate that one. Nice one, bro. What a nice man. Um, okay, so yeah, Ruben Neves invited to bid for Manchester United, but for a fucking hundred million pounds, guys. Right, quickly, just quickly, we got some news in regards to Manchester United's team selection tonight, guys. Um, the confirmed squad, essentially, not the team selection, sorry, but the confirmed squad, all players that have been, uh, you know, confirmed as in the matchday squad, which are as follows. De Gea, Heaton, Henderson, Bailly, Dallo, Fernandez, which is interesting, Jones, Lindelof, Tellers, Varane. Uh, then we've got Bruno Fernandes, Hannibal, Matic, Mata, McTominay, Ilanga, Garnacho, Lingard, Rashford, Ronaldo, and Shoratere. And this is from the Manchester Union News. You know, so that's the match day squad. Lots of youngsters in there. You can see you've got, um, it's, I'm sure, going to be the more, the more, um, the more experienced players that start the game, such as Matic, McTominay, Bruno Fernandes, of course, uh, Lindelof, Varane. Dallo, Tellez, more than likely, etc. But you might see this. Uh, you might see Fernandez come in. Maybe at some point in the game, you also might see Hannibal. Um, you also might see Garnacho feature. So you know, it's quite exciting. We might see some youngsters at some point. Um, but I think he's going to start with, based on what he said in his presser yesterday. I think he is going to start with. Um, the more experienced players. Uh, by the way, this is also what he's been saying about Manchester United's captaincy should go to a vote. This is what Ralph Rennick said. Uh, to quote Ralph Rennick, when speaking ahead of the, the game, he said, I can only tell you what I have done in the past when I was coach or manager, because in Germany it's called Mannschaftskapitän, which means the captain of the team. And uh, basically it's in regards to Maguire obviously missing the rest of the season. Ragnick does not believe the inter inter England international necessarily should retain the armband by default. He said, I strongly believe the captain should be elected by the team because he's called the team manager. And we always did that. We always had a board of four or five players. We called it Spielerat. <laughs> players Council Spielerat. Can we get a rat emoji in there for the splinter, the fucking king rat himself? Splinter, Mr. fucking Slabby Maguire. The Players Council Spielerat. Elected by the players. The player was the highest amount of votes was the team captain at the end. That's how I did it. I know a lot of head coaches don't do it that way. That's what I would do if I was still the manager next season. But in the end, I'm not. This is something that Eric will have to decide. So he suggested that maybe Manchester United squad should vote for who should be captain. I personally don't think that should be the case, though, myself. I think we should just let the new guy decide. Uh, hey, superstar. Hope you're doing well. Long time hero. What's going on with you, bro? Jack Abernathy says, why do we have two goalkeepers on the bench? That's disgraceful. I know. What the hell? Lee Grant's just there to hold a board up sometimes. Mitchell van der Gaag, Paul Mitchell and Mitchell, the fullback. Hey, nice one, Sim Sim. Respect. Thank you for the good pronunciation there, says Scalston. Cheers, mate. Fucking appreciate that work there, pal. Ricardo Dos Santos Nortman, how you doing, says Rat King. Lots of rat emojis coming in. So there you go, anyway. The Spieler Rat Players Council um, is going to decide maybe who's going to be the guest. I don't know. But anyway, lastly, that's it then, guys. So there's the confirmed news of the team. We're going to pretty much wrap the video up in a couple of minutes, but I'm just going to get quickly into the live chat, guys. Thank you, all of you legends, for getting in here and watching. Um, there's the confirmed squad gone. Let's move that out of the way. Um, let's have a look at the live chat then for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to get in here. Once again, guys, if you're just joining, smash that like button. Let's see if we can get 150 likes on the stream. 
Drop a subscribe if you're new to the channel. Make sure you click the bell icon so you get notifications when we go live. We'll be live later on at 7.15 uh, for the watch along. So do come and join us for that. But I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes. Uh, get in the chat. Let's chat. Ricardo Rojas, get Richard Rojas getting those rat emojis in there. Thank you, guy. Uh, Ryan says, if we let Newcastle sign Ben Ware, buddy, a shield, but kept Maguire, will lose my bloody mind. Yeah, respect, Ryan. I know it's actually shocking how many players we've missed up the opportunity of signing just to get a human snap. Ruben Diaz was another one. We let him go. You couldn't let our players pick the captain because they're a bunch of melts. I think to, uh, there's too much player power. Definitely Gary Finnegan. They will all probably vote for Harry Maguire, mate. Um, De Gea or Ronaldo should be captain. That's it, says Jonathan Gallagher. Yes, absolutely agree. Ronaldo and De Gea, yes. He is a goalkeeper. I'm not a big lover of that. We've seen some great captain goalkeepers before, though, the likes of Casillas. So it can it can happen. Um, De Gea, at the end of the day, all the players out there should be leading themselves. De Gea or Ronaldo, yeah, good shout. Eight years and 40 processes it's taken for this board to start listing the fans. And they're still not doing a very good job of it. Are they zero degrees of actually properly listing, though? Employees shouldn't pick who supervises them, says Sim Sim. I agree with you completely. Michael Matten says, damn, it's thought I thought I was on the wrong channel. Great Scouse accent. Hey, cheers there, Michael Matson, mate. Fucking appreciate you there, pal. You're a fucking legend getting here, lad. Fucking have you la. Thank you so much for joining us. Everyone smash a fucking like on the video and subscribe. Um, uh, Henry Kilman, what's going on, man? Thank you, Henry. Chris Coo says, have the board started listening to the fans, though? Not really, no. They said they were going to. They said they were going to have this new, you know, fans uh, intermediary type deal, but it's all bullshit. Dream midfield pairing for next season, Etra Dems. I would fancy us to go and get uh, realistic. This is realistic. Dream. Oh, you said dream. Uh, I would say, you know, maybe if we could go and get De Jong and uh, Tienemans, something like that would be pretty sweet. Or Ruben Neves, Tienemans, or Undidi and Tienemans, or, you know, something along those lines, something realistic. Um, yeah, Nicholas Sword is, is going free for fuck's sake. Free, and we paid a planet for slab. What is going on, mate? Says Ryan Mike. Yeah, but he's just a big German slabby Maguire. <laughs> <laughs> How? No, fair enough. Well, how would they pick a captain? They don't talk to each other, apparently, says Paul's story. Afternoon there, Leo the Third. Hey there, Lee Everett. He says, one thing I don't get is why Ragnick disrespected Ronaldo and not making him captain. Strange one, isn't it? It's absolutely a strange one. I don't get it either, mate. Ronaldo's literally the guy to be captain. I couldn't agree more. Maybe it's just based on the fact he's not been here that long for this time around. That doesn't really add up when he's the guy who's doing the bits for us and was here for fucking seven years previously in his career as well. So knows a thing or two about winning for Man United. He should be the captain, I agree. Smash a one if you think Ronaldo should be the captain. That's exactly who I think should be given the captain the rest of the season. Um, hey, Henrik Kerman says we've got 88 likes. Come on. And uh, we've actually got a few more than that. We've got 133, but get in. My day's going good. Thank you, Leo the Third. Hung out with Mrs. P earlier. She's gone off home now. Um, and uh, going to watch the football later. It's been a good day, mate. Not too bad so far. What if you make Ronaldo captain and De Gea vice, says Razak? Yeah, it's not a bad shout for any time Ronaldo's not around. If Ronaldo's still here next season, though, I would give him the full captaincy, yeah. And De Gea vice captain sounds absolutely a great plan, Razak. Paul Story, Elliot Manduna, Lee Everett, Kingsley, Chris Coo, all agree. Thank you, guys. Uh, why would De Jong leave Barcelona, who are in the Champions League, aren't they? Apparently went off the uh, last game, was subbed off and uh, was disappointed. Apparently he's not been having the best of times at Barcelona. That's what I've been hearing. If that's true, then maybe there's a, f a reason why he would want to go. Maybe Barca might be looking at signing other players this summer, which means that his place in the side is slightly limited, possibly. Um, Ten Hag is also another factor. He has that relationship with him, so... Hey, look, you can't you can't actually um, discount the personal relationships that might make a difference in those sorts of uh, deals. Potts said he is 100% sure Mbappe is staying at PSG next season. Really, Flabby G? Wow. That's interesting. Also, Barca can't afford it. We very nearly went in the summer last time. Barca can't afford his new contract demand, says Ryan. There you go. Interesting as well. Hopefully, Man United don't pay ridiculous amounts of money, though. I think Fred would be a decent captain, says Leo the Third. Yeah, he would be a decent captain. You're absolutely right, mate, for fucking Palmares. But not for Man United, mate. I'm sorry to say. He has actually a really good attitude on him and he fights too for now. But I'm sorry. We can't go into battle with Fred as our captain. He's not actually good enough. I'm sorry to say he is a good player. But we need somebody who sets a standard of elite mentality and elite play, if you ask me. Billy says, you know why Ronaldo isn't captain? Because he actually won something. And the rest of that gash-tastic group haven't even won a trip to the toilet. <laughs> True, Billy. He can't be the captain of the gashes, can he? 
People forgetting Rangnick came in as an interim. Why would he come in and just strip the current captain for no reason? Fair enough, Superstar. The reason, I'll tell you why the main reason is, though, is because he didn't select him as captain. He's managing the side, and it's his say. And if he thinks what's best for the team is to strip him the captaincy, he should have the bollocks to make that decision. I would have done if I came in as captain, even if it does cause a big issue in the middle of the season. If you don't remember, actually, in, in when he first came in, after the first game, we were shite and there was loads of turmoil and everyone was linked with a move away in January and nobody was playing with any harmony whatsoever. So the squad was gashed up anyway. You might as well at least, you know, set a new tone and set a new standard. That's where he went wrong. I think Ragnick should have come in a strict him of the captaincy. Pig, what stage are you with Bruno Fernandes? I'm at the stage where he's had a shitter of a season. I like his fight, but his overall play is just not to the standard. He's been letting us down, and he's got to step up and show that his new contract was worth it, mate. But I think he definitely should be sticking around for, you know, for Ten Hag, and Ten Hag could maybe get the best out of him. He's been a great player for 18 months before this shit spell. He's a great player. Uh, Etra Dems, uh, you're a bad person for hoping Mason can get away with it. He's such a good player. Yeah, you are. You probably are a bad person, Etra Dems. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, I know you said we need a we need a good player. But hey, look, Mason. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think he's necessarily going to play for Man United again, even if he is, is is found innocent. I don't want to make that bold claim, but I personally think that he might not be playing for us again. If he does just come back and waltzes in, they just allow it. Then what does that say for a football club? They probably they probably won't want. They probably won't want to let him go for nothing, will they? Let's face it. He's a big asset to them. Yeah, forgot about Mason. Yeah, well, we have to see what goes on there as well. Ronaldo's the obvious captain, says Robin. No one else. A captain has to be a leader. That includes being a leader on a pitch with their performances. Spot on, Gary. Hashtag Ronaldo for captain. Mason doesn't deserve to play for any team ever again, says Leo the Third. Well, there you go. Uh, Benny says, I think there's more going on back at house. Well, hang on. Let's actually let justice take its course, though, at the same time, because I do understand, obviously, that there is a little thing called innocent until proven guilty. And sometimes in the past, things have been fabricated to seem a certain way. We can, we've can we all made our, our own opinions up on what we've heard so far. So, yeah, it's pretty damning, 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 damning. But also, there is a little thing called innocent until proven guilty, my friends. Let's just be honest and say that that's true. Anyway, uh, right, okay, yeah, that's right, Gaston. You shouldn't just assume anyone is, is guilty until they've been proven it, right? Brain is like deodorant. People that need it the most don't use it, says zero degrees. <laughs> Catalan says Barca would accept 110 million euros for De Jong due to reliable source in Catalonia. Nice one, Catalan King. Yeah, that's quite a lot of money, but, I mean, look, United... Maybe could do a deal with somebody else going in the opposite direction. We've heard £60 million over here could be an appropriate figure. Anything could be true. We're seeing it happen with Johnny Depp and uh, Amber Turd right now, I suppose. Like Amber Heard, for example. There you go, Robin. There you go, Robin. Exactly, mate. That, exactly. There's, there's definite situations where things can be misconstrued. And who knows? I mean, look, guys, look, I'm not going to pretend. I don't want to discredit any victim's claims here. That's not what I'm doing. But let's just say, I don't know. Who fucking knows? You don't know the context. Who knows if they were playing a fucking, you know, like a, they've got, a, they're reading through a script. I'm just saying, like, there's obviously things that can happen that can make that certain things seem a certain way. Might not be 100% that, that way. That's not what I'm saying. I see, I've said the evidence that I've seen so far is damning. But, innocent until proven guilty. Right? Okay. We're gonna, on, on that note, we're going to wrap things up in a minute, but I'm just going to give you a quick rundown if you just join us. So reports that Agent Mina Riola had died was reported by loads of different outlets around the world. A disgrace, a disgrace that they reported it prematurely because he's not died, guys. He's not died. In fact, he quoted himself, uh, quote, uh, as quote, to quote him himself on Twitter, said, current health status for the ones wondering, pissed off for the second time in four months, they kill me. Seem also able to resuscitate. So, so many different outlets reported it, and it is a disgrace. Shame. Shame on those outlets, guys. Uh, his doctor said that he's in an extremely critical condition, but he is fighting. Romano gave an update from his doctor that said, I'm outraged by the phone calls from pseudo-journalists speculating on the life of a man who was fighting to survive. And uh, so in regards to me and Ronnie, at the moment, it's understood he is still alive and he is still fighting. So a bit disrespectful for a lot of these companies or a lot of these uh, news outlets to come out and report that he had passed away. Pretty shocking, man. Pretty shocking. Uh, also, other news, you know, there's the there's the team news for the, the, the squad tonight. If you just want to know very quickly what the confirmed squad is, that is it. All those players are available in the squad tonight for Manchester United for the Chelsea game. Um, and then just lastly, there's a, quite a bit of information that's come out in regards to uh, um, Arsenal being interested in Marcus Rashford as well. And also Ruben Neves. Apparently they're interested in Ruben Neves as well. And they're in for him. Uh, 
So there you go. That's pretty much the latest news, guys. That's pretty much it. I'm going to just quickly look at the live chat. Uh, yeah, I mean, Razak is a, is, a, is a parasite in the sense of an agent, football agent, absolutely. Um, what do you think will happen with the Pogba pig if you have time to answer? I think he's going to go to PSG, mate. I think all one of those clubs, maybe Juventus. But yeah, he's going to go on a three in the summer to one of those guys. Um, nice one. I'm going to wrap it up then. Thank you so much. We're four likes away from 150 likes. Do drop a like on this video if you haven't done so to see if we can get to 150. But there we go. That's the news. Thanks for watching. There's the latest update. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you get the latest updates every single day when we go live. Click the bell icon so you receive the notifications when we post and go live as well. Um, and also click the old uh, subscribe. Click the old website button in the in the description not button. Click the link in the description to go to the website, unitedflyinghigh.com as well. Check us out on social media too. Fly and Pig United on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Hashtag fake news out. Clickbait merchants shit the bed. And hashtag shame on all these melters. Catch you in a bit, guys, for the United game. We're going to smash up some falls later. Hope so anyway. I'm going for a 2-1 loss. <laughs> See you later, Stephen Carr, Robin, Primot, Lee, Ryan, Johnny, Robin, Billy. Uh, Paul Story, Johnny Gallagher, Chris Coop, Big Old Bob, of course, as Johnny, Scouse Don, Ryan, Henrik Kelman, all the rest of you legends. That's it from me. Stay classy. This is the pig. I'm out of here. And come on, United, sort your bloody lives out. <laughs>